Hello, BookTube. I'm coming back to you with another top 10 list. Uh, again, not in any, uh, you know, not in order of, you know, worst to best or anything like that. This time, they're sort of uh, in order of their birth dates. And, uh, well, when I say essayists, they're all ex-essayists because they've given up the ghost. They're dead, demised, departed, deceased, dispatched, passed away, succumbed, checked out, croaked, breathed their last, expired, kicked the bucket, bought the farm, met their maker, bit the dust, pegged out, popped their clogs, snuffed it, shuffled off this mortal coil, cashed in their chips, gone the way of all mortal flesh, resting in peace, six feet under, having a dirt nap, pushing up daisies. In short, they are no more. So, as I say, uh, the, this is uh, a list of my sort of uh, favorite essayists. And funnily enough, only one was born in the 20th century. Uh, the earliest born is Thomas de Quincey, 1789 to 1859. Uh, uh, what is it? Memoirs of an opium opium smoker or whatever uh, is his biggest known one, but he was a fabulous essayist and uh, uh, mail coach uh, is is just fabulous his uh, is his essays and I have not even come close to reading all of it. I've got a few volumes and I've over the years dipped in you know every so often and I've enjoyed every single one. The next, um, going into the 19th century, is Edgar Allan Poe, uh, also probably known for other things as fiction, but uh, there's a fabulous, yeah, I, I don't have any props here, but there's a fabulous uh, Library of America edition of his essays, book reviews, uh, just fabulous, fabulous stuff, and he was just a master at, at uh, writing and his insights. Even even books that I've never heard of and probably will never ever read, and they're just fun fun to actually read his thoughts on it. Uh, and uh, ones that sort of really jump out is um, a uh, uh, essay on poetry uh, and a few other things. Just just fabulous stuff. Uh, another author uh, again, nineteenth century, but we're moving up into the forties on uh, eighteen forty. Uh, John Addington Simmons. I'm including him. Some may argue that he's not really an essayist in the sense of short form, but he did write a long essay on the Renaissance, which is fabulous. But I love his travels, uh, like their little chapter. And to me, they're they're like essays, beautifully, beautifully written. Uh, his 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 writing style is just fabulous. Uh, on on sort of Italy, uh, Greece, uh, and I think even France, like the whole. There's about three or four volumes uh, of uh, that I have anyway of his travel ones, and uh, it's kind of interesting because the set, as far as I know, belonged to I think uh, family of the White Star uh, line, uh, a daughter I think uh, of them. Uh, they're a bit rough, but they're they they're, um, they've never been read because I have to every time I go to read something I have to slice open the page. Uh, but yeah, he, he lived from 1840 to 1893. Also a great poet, uh, really, really good. And, uh, just, I, I do like his writing a lot. Andrew Lang, uh, 1844 to 1912. So he got into, uh, the rest, I think all, yes, the rest got into the, uh, uh, 20th century before they shuffled off their mortal coins. Um, Andrew Lang, yeah, probably best known, <coughs> excuse me, for his fairy books, uh, Blue Fairy Book, uh, Red Fairy Book, Orange Fairy Book, uh, on and on and on and on. I've actually never read any of those. It's the essays and his poetry that I really like. He's got a volume, uh, Books and Bookmen. Uh, it's about his collecting, uh, Elseviers, I think it is. Uh, and just other books, and they're just, they're fabulous, really, really good. 
Uh, he's also got a couple volumes of, uh, like, letters to dead authors. You know, he's writing letters, like fan letters, to, uh, to dead authors. And even uh, letters, uh, and there's another one, letter to the author. I think it's like the, the character in a book writing a letter. Uh, and it just... Uh, Essays, well, I'm, I'm being a bit uh, broad here with the term essay, but it's something shortish, uh, anyway. Uh, and then we got Edmund Goss, uh, 1849 to 1928. I really like his stuff. I've got about seven or eight volumes. Very, very interesting guy. Um, sort of had a lot of scandal. Uh, but, you know, there, there's, there's uh, essays from sort of collecting and about books and a lot of authors and I really really like his his style his pro style and uh, insights on authors as well um, and he knew a lot of people at the time he was he was very popular and easy to read he very very easy to read uh, then we got Augustin Beryl uh, 1850 to 1933 one of my favorites, definitely. Uh, like if, if any of the others, uh, well, actually, yeah, I think this is a good top ten list. I can add to it, but I was just thinking, is there any that I could sort of throw out? And I'm looking here and I'm going, mm, no. Uh, but Augustine Burrow, he, he was an MP. Uh, he was mixed up with uh, Ireland uh, in the, uh, uh, the, the uh, home rule and so forth. Uh, oops, sorry, there's, I just had a, a email come in and I should have turned off, that's what I'll do now. Um, and, uh, but he, his essays are fabulous. He writes about collecting, about books, uh, there's one really good one, he, he sort of says, you know, oh, you could, you know, um, you can easily get together like, you know, two, three thousand or four thousand books and there's no sense bragging about that. It's when you get 10,000 on one subject, then you can begin to brag. <coughs> but yeah, he's just a fabulous uh, essayist. Um, uh, Oberdicta um, is one title uh, of, of, his, of his collection of essays, and uh, there's several others. I, I, I don't have them all, and I, I keep on the out, uh, lookout for... I was going to say Outlook. Uh, the Lookout uh, on Lookout for um, his books. And I've read most of the essays that I have, I think. I've got about six volumes. And there's, I think, two or three volumes that are sort of uh, a collection of his that has a good chunk of it. Arnold Bennett, uh, mostly known. Uh, he was an author. Uh, oh, well, Augustine Burrell, I didn't say maybe, 1850 and 1933. Uh Arnold Bennett, 1867 to 1931, an author, uh, <clears throat> um, mostly, I guess, known uh, for Anna of, was it Three Towns, or I think it is, sort of uh, uh, northern uh, type stuff, really, yeah, I like his, I like his fiction, he's, uh, he could definitely go in, and I'm not, I can't remember if we got him on the list of forgotten writers, but I really, really like his, his stuff, and he, he wrote a lot of little essays or book reviews for a number of periodicals, and those are just fabulous. I've got a few collections of his, his articles, and they are just really, really interesting. Um, another one that I really like, and he was extremely prolific, uh, people have said that he probably wrote more words than he ever spoke, uh, was E.V. Lucas. Uh, Ed, Edward Vero Lucas just just fabulous fabulous um, uh, writing uh, you know he's, he's got an essay on a bat that I just it just jumps out and just so many things uh, very short and uh, he, he lived from 1868 to 1938 uh, just again just just fabulous stuff that I, I just I continually go back to I've got a I've got pretty well a shelf of his books, and that's just a small fraction of, of what he what he's written. Uh, then we go to G.K. Chesterton, uh, 1874 to 1936. Probably mostly known for Father Brown, but I think he yeah, has Four Just Men. Um, 
I definitely like his non like a lot of these. I like their non-fiction more than their fiction. Uh, but uh, you know, for Edgar Allan Poe, mm, that's you know they're about par. Uh, but yeah, uh, G.K. Chesterton just you know he was he wrote articles too, uh, you know book reviews that are just fabulous. Uh, and all you've got to do is look up one little essay, and just just this essay alone. Uh, puts him to me in the top 10 regardless if he wrote anything else it's called on lying in bed and it's it's just the pondering of lying in bed and looking at the ceiling and thinking if i had a long enough pencil i could draw on the ceiling it's just fabulous i i, I keep going back to rereading that every so often it is a wonderful essay now and here uh the the last one is definitely an author that I, I enjoy enjoy his nonfiction much, much more than his fiction. I think his biggest books or the biggest best known books are over uh, overblown and overrated. Uh, and we're talking George Orwell, Eric Arthur Blair uh, was his real name. He lived from 1903 to 1950. And obviously it's his last two books, uh, well, uh, second last, uh, Animal Farm and uh, 1984, his last book, are the ones that uh, uh, most people have. I have uh, 20, well, actually 21, because there was a supplementary volume done of his complete works. Uh, essays, uh, diaries, letters. But there is a fabulous, it's, it's over a thousand pages long, every minute library of his essays. And they are just fabulous. Um, you know, um, a hanging... Um, shooting an elephant just just fabulous fabulous uh writing uh he was i think he was a master when he when he went to his non-fiction and he was writing essays you know there there are three there, there, well there's three longer essays that he's uh did uh, published in a book called inside the whale and it's just fabulous because one is on dickens one is on um Oh, what's the guy who wrote Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Cap Capricorn? And then boys, uh, sort of, you know, boy stories, that type of thing. Uh, and he called it Inside the Whale. It's like he's saying that, you know, they're good stuff, but they don't show the reality of the world of the time they're writing. It's like you're, you're uh, isolated inside of a whale, you know. Um, even Dickens, even though he, he, he likes Dickens, but it's just... They're fabulous essays, and he wrote another wonderful essay on P.G. Woodhouse as well, and he actually wound up having uh, to interview him in, in Paris uh, after the war as well. Uh, but yeah, uh, Eric Arthur Blair, George R. Well, is, to me, um, one of the best essayists that there has ever lived. You know, there, like I could go on with this list, because I could go on and talk about, you know, Montaigne, uh, there's, you know, the, the list is actually endless, but I, I sort of wanted to, to pick ones that were fresh in my mind and ones that I know that I've reread essays over and over and over again, um, to, uh, to, to, to put on this list because it, to me, any, any top 10 list is difficult and to put it in like order is just impossible for me to do, uh, in any shape or form. But uh, those are my list of 10 dead authors. That seems to be a popular saying going around now. But yeah, a lot of authors are dead. So don't hold that against me. Uh, so yeah, so I'll see if I can find um, uh, another sort of topic to do uh, top 10 on. Uh, but uh, I'll see you next time, BookTube.